Associated to a linear transformation, there are two different canonical subspaces, the null space and the column space of a transformation. Indeed, imagine you have some matrix A that is the matrix representation for your linear transformation. Then the null space can be thought of as all of the vectors in your domain that get mapped to zero. Or in other words, the null space represents all of the vectors that are solutions to AX equaling zero, or solutions to the homogeneous system. Whereas the column space, that lives in the codomain and is represented as all of the different solutions to AX equal to B. Or in other words, what vectors B can be written as a linear combination of the columns of A. So we have these two different subspaces, and the question is going to be, how do I find a basis for those two different subspaces? And the idea is going to be that we know a lot about how to solve systems of linear equations when we translate the question of the column space or the null space into solutions ax equal to b or ax equal to zero. We're going to apply a row reductions and we're going to analyze what we get from that in order to tell us what the bases are for the row space and for the column space. Now, let's recall that a basis for a particular subspace is going to be some list of vectors that has two different properties. First of all, we want to know that the span of that list of vectors is going to generate the entire subspace. That is, that linear combinations of the vectors on the list can hit any possible vector in the subspace. Secondly, we want to know that we don't have, in a sense, too many vectors on this list. That is, we want to know that the list of vectors is linearly independent. And when we have both of those two things, the spanning of the subspace and the linear independence, our list of vectors is indeed going to be a basis. So our goal now is going to be to find bases for the null space and the column space. Let's take, as an example, the following linear system. I'm going to have 1, 0, 0, how about 2, 0, 0, uh, how about a 0, 1, 0, and just to spice it up, a 0, 3, 0. And then I'm going to be considering the homogeneous linear system where I have the constant matrix of 0, 0, 0 appended. Now, we should know how to go about solving these kind of systems. Indeed, we see that we have these two different free columns, and that's going to allow us to specify that x2 is s and that our x4 is going to be t. These are our free parameters. And then if I'm going to read off of the second row what I would get would be that my x3 is equal to minus 3 times t, and reading off of the first row, I would get that my x1 is equal to minus 2 times s. And then finally, we would write it in the following manner. We would say that our vector x was going to be equal to a linear combination with parameters where we first look at all the things that have s's in them, minus 2, 1, 0, 0, and then we add all the things that have t's inside of them, which is going to be 0, 0, minus 3, and 1. Now, this was just a procedure that we've seen in the past, but let's investigate it to see whether or not it gives me the answer that I want. Well, notice a couple different things. First of all, I think that it spans the null space. Remember that the null space is defined to be all of the vectors such that your ax goes to zero. But here we're solving ax equal to zero and we're finding all of the vectors x. We're claiming that all of those vectors can be written in precisely this way. So indeed, these two different vectors that we have, they span the null space. However, just because they span the null space doesn't tell me that they're a basis because to be a basis, we also have to have these that are being linearly independent. Now, to see that they're linearly independent, I want you to focus down here on the 1, 0 and the 0, 1. Notice that we almost chose these to have this pattern where we, we set that the second and the fourth columns were going to be either all the S or all of the T, which meant that either the second or the fourth row in these vectors were either going to be ones or zeros when you factor the s and the t out. 
So we immediately know that there's no way that I can take one of the vectors and write it as a multiplication of the others by some scalar. This, by the way, is generally true. The Gaussian algorithm that in the past had just been an algorithm for us. It was a methodology to be able to solve ax equal to zero or ax equal to b. But it was really nice because the solutions to ax equal to zero, those different families of solutions, those vectors, those happen to form a basis. And it happens every single time. They will always be linearly independent by the construction of the Gaussian algorithm, and they are for sure going to span the space. So they are going to be a basis for the null space. So therefore, if you want to figure out what a basis for the null space is, just do what we did before. Apply the Gaussian algorithm, and the vectors that you get, those are going to be your answers. Now, I'm going to look at the same matrix that we had here. Not the entire system, I'm not going to put a B vector there, I'm just going to look at the coefficient matrix. And because I've chosen a matrix that's already in its reduced row echelon form, I'm not going to do that first step. But the first step would always be to put it into the reduced row echelon form. Now, I want you to look at the first and second columns here. There's something very interesting going on about this first and second column. Note that they're linearly dependent. That second column is just a multiple of the first. And the same is true of the third and fourth columns. They are also just going to be multiples. Now, if you have a matrix and it's in its reduced row echelon form, this is going to be generally true. What's interesting for us is the columns that have those leading ones. And then the columns that, that don't have leading ones, the three columns, those are always going to be, in the Gaussian algorithm, they're always going to be just linear combinations of the columns with leading ones. Note that this is not just an artifact of our particular system that we're looking at. This is true in general. It is a theorem for all systems that have been put into the RREF via the Gaussian elimination process. Now, let's turn back to the column space. Remember, the column space is the linear combination of the columns. So, in other words, in this case, it's a linear combination of four different columns. However, the second and the fourth column here are irrelevant. They don't add any new information because they already depend on the first and third columns. So adding the second and the fourth columns just really doesn't do anything. So in other words, if I only look at the first and third columns, those are going to be a spanning set for my column space. In other words, I can say that my column space of A is just going to be the span of, and then the vectors I'm going to put down here are the vectors only with leading ones. The 1, 0, 0, and the 0, 1, 0. Now, just as before, simply because we have something spanning doesn't mean that we have it being a basis, because it also has to be linearly independent. But that is true in this scenario. Now, I want you to notice this one here. One of the components of our Gaussian algorithm is that the leading ones were always going to be down and to the left of the ones above it. Which means that if I have a one there, then the vector to the left of it is going to have a zero there. So there's no way that the second vector could be linearly dependent on the first. These vectors are going to be linearly independent. And so indeed what we have is that these two vectors they are going to form a basis. So in summary, our two methodologies are for the null space, you just do what we did before, and those special vectors that had parameters stuck out the front, those vectors were going to be a basis for the null space. And then for the column space, we also do what we did before, put it into the row echelon form. But instead of putting all of the columns down, we only consider the columns of leading ones, and those are always going to form our basis.